So now that we know what Tawheed is, we must study its um, categories. And the first of the categories of Tawheed is Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, the Tawheed of the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His Lordship, Tawheed in His Lordship means that He is the only Creator, the only Administrator, the only Cherisher, the only nourisher of the entire creation. Some of these creations we can witness with our eyes, such as the animals, birds, insects, fish. And there are other creations that he informed us about, such as the angels and the jinn, whom we cannot see. And yet, there are other creations that he did not tell us about. There's so much, such a gigantic universe that we have not seen. Regardless, he is the one who created them all, administers them all, and provides whatever sustenance they need in order to live. And he is the one who created all matter, energy, space and time which is the universe he brought everything into existence because he's the creator and everything else besides him is the creation alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen he's the rabb the rest is alameen the creation that's the lordship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the tawheed in his lordship he is the only creator and then his names and attributes. His names and attributes are only known through revelation. Because there is nothing like him. There is no way we can know him through creation. He is the one who has to reveal himself to us. And through revelation, it is he who has informed the humanity of his names and attributes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not simply a concept. Rather, he is the greatest being that exists. The greatest being that exists that brought everything else into existence. Was it not for him, nothing would exist. He created all other beings. However, his being is not contingent on anything or anyone while all else is in need of him at all times. This is the meaning of one of his names, Al-Ghani. Free of need, but everyone and everything needs him. Subhanallah, there's a chain of dependency. Every creation has a chain of dependency that needs him to bring it to existence and to sustain it. You see, me, I needed my mother and father to come into existence. They needed their mother and father, and so on and so forth. This is called the chain of dependency. It goes all the way back, right? All the way back to the first humans, Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve, where did they come from? Monkeys? Chimps? Gorillas? Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam, alayhi salam. And just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the Adam and the humans after him that came from him and Eve, likewise Allah Azza wa Jal started the creation of animals, all sorts of animals. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started the chain of birds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started the chain of fish. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the creation. He is the one that started it all, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why he's Al-Khaliq, the one and only creator. So all of the creation goes back to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He brought them into existence. Yet his existence is not contingent on anyone or anything, while all else is contingent upon him. And that is only logical. That is only mathematical. Because... 
There has to be that one. That one in this chain of dependency, in this contingent chain, right? That starts that one. If there is no one, there is none. If there is no one, there is none. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who must start everything. Because this chain of dependency, was it to continue? Was it to continue backwards, unending, this regress, unlimited regress of dependency, it, the only result that it leads to is non-existence. Nothing can exist. But the fact that I'm talking to you, the fact that you're listening to me, the fact that, uh, you know, all, everything is existing and everything is making progress, everything is moving forward, it only means that this chain of dependency had started. It was started by this independent creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because if he was dependent, then he needs someone to start him or create him, bring him into existence. And likewise, nothing would exist. So the fact that everything exists, the fact that I exist, the fact that you exist, is a proof that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. So he's Al-Khaliq, the one and only creator. He's Al-Musawwir, the one who fashioned and proportioned all of his creation beautifully. He's Al-Qadir, omnipotent, having power over all things. He's Al-Alim, the all-knowing. He's Al-Hakim, the most wise, whose all decisions are appropriate for his creation. He's Al-Wadud, the most loving. And likewise, Ar-Rahman, the most compassionate. At the same time, he is Al-Adl, the perfectly just. The most sublime and perfect attributes are beautifully balanced with one another. We do not deny what he ascribed to himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not alter the meanings of his attributes. We do not set any comparisons with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is his names and attributes. And once we know Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, through his names and attributes, then the only logical, sensible result should be that we worship Him alone. And that's why the third category of Tawheed is His exclusive right of worship. His right of worship means that when human beings or any of His creation realizes the fact that even our very existence is contingent upon him, then we must naturally submit to him in worship. And we do not turn to any of his creation in worship. This is the root of Islam and all goodness extends from it, meaning from the Tawheed. And the greatest of evils and injustice is to turn in worship to anyone or anything other than him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is called shirk. And even worse than shirk is kufr, which is to deny his very existence. Both shirk and kufr lead the person to eternal punishment in the hellfire. 